How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Oh, we got a lot to get into here today. It is Thursday here on the program. And, uh, and a lot to get into. Last night, AEW Dynamite. And a lot of angles shot. A lot of storylines leading to their pay-per-view coming up at the end of the month. Which we will be attending, I might add. So we'll tell you about AEW Dynamite. NXT 2.0 ratings from Wednesday night. We got some more all-time record lows. Which, of course, if you're a fan of uh, women's professional wrestling, that's bad news. Because that was an all-women's show. Every single match on the show featured women. And it did a record low number. We've also got notes on the AEW Warner Media relationship. We have got an update on Kota Ibushi. And uh, this is not looking good for Kota Ibushi. We'll tell you about that here today. Roman Reigns, we talked a little bit about the idea that he is uh, paring down his schedule this summer. And in fact, he is, perhaps not as, uh, perhaps not as uh, dramatically as we had thought, but still fairly dramatic. And uh, there's a key to this that's more than just him being off shows. We've got NXT returning to touring more. NIL deals, Hikaru Shida, and plenty more. So if you're hoping for frivolity on this show, you ain't going to get it. I also didn't sleep at all last night. Whatever illness I had, I still got in here, and my daughter didn't sleep at all last night. So it's been uh, rough. But you know what? I'm here. And so are you. And so when we come back from the break, we're going to get in all of this news. 425-780-7566. Back in a moment with more Wrestling Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Simber, VB, also of WrestlingObserver.com. I tried to tell you, but it was too late. You got a buzz. I don't, you know Not what? the right kind of buzz either. You're exactly right. You know what kind of buzz I need right now? A NyQuil buzz. This is miserable. Why did you give this to me? How did you give me your sickness that not only now won't go away, that is infecting your family again? How did this happen? I, I don't know. It's not affecting them again. The issue is it won't go away. <sighs> I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll you s- switch to the other channel while I get going on all this stuff right here. All right. Uh, yeah, we got a lot of news to get into here today. So, uh, I mean, the first story I want to get into... We kind of talked about this uh, AW Discovery thing and what does it mean. And, uh, well, we don't know. But one of the major players that helped AEW expand within Warner Media is leaving the company. Deadline first reported Wednesday, Brett White, general manager of TNT, TBS, and True TV, will be transitioning out of his role within the next month after 14 years within Turner. White's found himself without a position following the Warner Media Discovery merger. Took over as GM when AEW launched on TNT. Helped to guide its subsequent expansion with Rampage and Battle of the Belt, in addition to reviving the John Cena-led wipeout on TBS. New environment within the new Warner Brothers Discovery corporate environment continues to be shaken up due to the fallout from the recently approved merger. So, again, what does this mean? We don't know. But... I can tell you some facts. This guy's gone. He helped with the expansion of AEW. That doesn't mean AEW is being canceled, but obviously, obviously, objectively, factually, it certainly would have been better if he had been promoted instead of fired. Now, you guys remember the uh, AOL Time Warner merger and ultimately the death of WCW. And all of the people that were booking and et cetera with WCW, they have laid all the blame on the AOL Time Warner merger because they can't blame themselves. I mean, they could, but they don't. And so it's all the fault of the merger. Well, what happened was they booked the company into oblivion and it was bleeding millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars. About $65 million it lost in a year, okay? So, yeah, if you if you do a merger and you hire a guy who doesn't like wrestling and the wrestling show's bleeding money, yeah, it gets canceled. 
Now, a few years earlier, WCW was grossing $125 million a year, which back then, that was the most lucrative wrestling company in the history of the planet Earth. And given we don't know if there's alien life, in the history of this universe, no company had ever been more lucrative than World Championship Wrestling. Talking WWF in the 80s with Hogan, nothing, ever. They were number one in history. Now, if there had been a merger then, I mean, there's no guarantee that they would have been canceled because they would have been making money. So Rampage and Dynamite are doing very, very well, given the time slot, what they're, what uh, is being paid for the programming, etc. So there may very well be people within AOL or uh, uh, Warner Media here that don't like wrestling, but it's a business. And if the wrestling is doing well, it doesn't matter if they don't like wrestling or not. If they're here to do business, then AEW is going to be fine. They may even get a better deal. But uh, that's not a guarantee. Not a guarantee they'll get the same money. None of this is a guarantee. So we'll see what happens, but that is the that is the latest shakeup with this merger here. What is a guarantee in life, Brian? Well, Nothing. That I'm sick? That's guaranteed. Uh, yeah, actually it is. Kotobushi. So uh, I talked about Kotobushi. He's going to take over when it comes time for AEW to make a move. He's going to make his bid. So uh, there's a lot of stuff out there about Kotobushi. Mm. You know what I am? What's that? I'm a man of facts. Oh, yeah? Okay. So I'm only going to tell you what I'm I'm pretty confident is uh, is going on here. He He's on Twitter. That, that yeah, is a fact. This guy probably needs to get off Twitter here. So uh, there's been a lot of translations of tweets, and uh, I'm not going to go into any of those because they're just they're all over the place, all right? But I do know this. As I mentioned a couple of days ago, he doesn't like them attempting to force him to come back and work hurt, okay? And uh, part of the story that I don't think has been talked about by anybody is, uh, do you remember uh, the G1 last year? Yes. Bro, this guy was the walking wounded. He was hurting in that G1. And uh, and it didn't matter. They wanted him to work the G1. And uh, this issue that he's had, I mean, I don't know how far it dates back, but it dates back at least to the G1 and maybe further back. So he was just, like, he was in bad shape during the G1 and uh there was there was a lot of uh there were issues between the two sides because of that they wanted him in the G1 and uh he was hurting but he did the G1 because that's what they wanted and uh you know he then went on and uh injured his shoulder and i think that you know there's probably a lot of blame in his brain for that one like, bro, I didn't even want to work this G1. You guys made me work this G1. You made me do all this when I didn't want to. And then I got hurt. And then he gets hurt. And, uh, you know, I think it was a separated shoulder. And, you know, I can talk quite a bit about separated shoulders because I separated both of mine wrestling. And when he talked about bench pressing, I never bench press as much as Ibushi did, okay? But uh, for a while there, I could bench a lot. I could bench 280. And I separated my shoulder, and I could not bench that bar for a long time. And uh, he actually did a tweet literally saying the exact same thing. I used to bench, I think he said like 320 pounds or something like that. Now I'm, I'm benching like, uh, you know, a little bit more than the bar. He has no strength. His shoulder is nowhere near recovered. That's what happens when you separate your shoulder, and it's serious. And uh, they've been trying to get him to come back. He doesn't want to come back. And I think, I don't know. But putting these puzzle pieces together, this dude's already angry that he got hurt working a match when he didn't want to work a match. And then as he's recovering and not recovered, they're trying to get him back again. So that's one of the uh, that's one of that's that's perhaps the crux of the issue. And then this guy's just gone nuts on Twitter, okay? And uh, so he was talking about this uh, Kikuchi guy that he claims is uh, the Booker. And, uh, you know, everyone's been under the impression that Ghetto is the booker. And I don't know, I don't know exactly what's going on. I'm not going to lie, okay? Dave says that Ghetto is still the booker. 
And uh, as of just not that long ago, I mean, if Ghetto wasn't the booker, then the wrestlers didn't know about it because I had wrestlers talking to me about how Ghetto was the booker. Now, I talked to somebody in Japan who told me that what Ibushi actually said is Kikuchi is a booker, not the booker. And so I don't know what that means, if he's in charge of this or that or whatever, but it appears that this Kikuchi is doing something and it wasn't supposed to come out. And so Ibushi coming out with this and then, you know, a bunch of other stuff that, uh, that he has said on, on Twitter, uh, you know, I don't, I don't, uh, I'm not over there. People over there know way more than me about the culture, but I was told by somebody who is there all the time, very connected that this isn't like America where, you know, Cody goes on TV and he says a bunch of stuff about WWE and he buries them and he ridicules them. But then his contract comes up and they're like, bro, we want this guy. And they hire him, okay? That's not Japan. The exact wording I was told was, he's burned his bridges. As in, not just like New Japan. And I find it hard to believe that nobody would want to hire uh, Kota Ibushi. But the culture of Japan is, you don't do stuff like this. This is a no-no. You do not reveal things and he did and so uh there's kind of this feeling that you know he may be done do i believe that kotobushi is never wrestling again i find that hard to believe but uh suffice to say this is a this is not good at this point for kotobushi so anyway we'll get mike sots and talk more about the news after the break observer live Back at the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Simbervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. I would just like to make it abundantly clear, since a lot of people have asked on the on the chat, and he's on the show all the time. I've heard zero zilch from Rocky Romero. Nothing. And I would bet if I asked him, he would have no idea what's going on. But uh, this is someone over in Japan who is very well connected, who, quite frankly, I don't think anybody listening to this would have any idea who this is. So it's not just some random wrestler talking about what they've heard but anyway and actually it's from uh two different people in fact not just one so anything you want to add or should we just move on here <laughs> the Adam like big audio nightmare which is available for subscribers at wrestlingobserver.com talk a lot about this situation up until the point today because we recorded the show after observer live yesterday so we talk a lot about uh, the entire situation with him, what he may have been intending to do, who Kikuchi is, and, and a little bit of that sort of stuff. Um, at this point, though, that doesn't really matter. He, what, The bottom line is is he is outright trying to get fired, and he can. Now, there are maybe things that are being translated that are being alleged that he may be saying that you know would put a negative light on him wrestling anywhere in Japan. And he is being very outspoken. Now, he is a man with options. One of those big options is coming to the United States and going internationally and making money. Where now that becomes an issue is the AEW relationship with New Japan, the relationship with anybody who has had dealings with Ibushi. That's going to be very, very interesting because his best friend, you know, on that don't know these guys personally, but one of his best friends in the whole wide world, Kenny Omega is the executive vice president with AEW, for business reasons that have nothing to do with Japan, that have no bearing on AEW whatsoever, they can say, we would like to bring in Kota Ibushi, and it would make sense. Except how would New Japan feel about that? And there's where that whole can of worms gets really, really nasty, and where it now affects American wrestling fans, where it affects this show mostly, We'll talk about it on the Big Audio Nightmare when it comes to Japan. But when it comes to this show, it's now going to be the relationship between New Japan and AEW and Kota Ibushi. And if he does leave, then what happens? Dave gave an update on Roman Reigns last night. Reigns is off the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view. Will be wrestling at other pay-per-views this summer. And uh, he will be doing some TV to be able to... Yeah, that's nice. Nice to see he'll be doing some angles to build up those matches. But yes, he's going to be working far fewer dates, and uh, he's essentially going to be doing the same number of dates that uh, Lesnar was doing when Lesnar was around, which was not very many dates. And, uh, I mean, 
Congratulations bro. on the deal, brother. I mean, it's all nice and all. I have, I have nothing against Roman Reigns. Good for the guy, but bro. So you guys did a unification match, and you unified the two main titles into one title, and now the guy's never going to be around. E- even when Lesnar was never around, you had the other champion. So essentially, we've iced, we've iced the WWE and Universal Championships, and uh, now Who cares? we rely Who cares? we rely on the uh, U.S. title. Who cares? Anyone know who the U.S. champion is? And no. we rely on the Intercontinental Championship. Anybody know who the Intercontinental Champion is? I think Ricochet. And he's in uh, bad matches. Uh, yes, it's actually uh, Ricky Sh- Ricochet in theory. Ricochet, yes. Those are your top champions in <laughs> WWE as they attempt to sell tickets. <laughs> they, on I'd the rather road. see Ricky Shane Page as the Intercontinental Champion right now. They don't care about their belts. Their props is part of the game. As long as Roman or Brock has got one, or maybe Drew, it doesn't really matter. Well, hold on a second. They Why? do care about their belts because. They had to have not as a, they a had to have point. a Raw and a SmackDown World Champion. They had to have a Raw and a SmackDown second. Why did they not unify these belts a long time ago? Because they felt, well, if we go on the road, we've got to have these championship matches. If we have a Raw show and a SmackDown touring show, we have to have championship matches. They believe but it was a that they need argument, Brian. championship matches. But it was a weak argument from them because their championships, if you look at it on paper, didn't really mean anything. They would have the belt on guys sometimes. I mean, your Jinder Mahal examples, guys like that, that like... This isn't going to benefit you going out on the road that this person's your champion or the fact that you have two belts. What would you rather see, some geek with this belt or see Roman Reigns or Brock Lesnar? So it was a weak argument to begin with. I just... I, at this point, with how they run their business and the Muppet show that they like to create, this hybrid sports entertainment universe that, that you know... S- saturates their fan base and makes them happy, I mean... Let them do what they want. That's how they're going to do it. That's how they feel about it. Fine. They don't need multiple belts. They don't need to try to fake push the U.S. or IC titles. I mean, we've gone through that how many times, and you know where that always leads. So, you know, it's nice to have one, well, but come on. Well, here's the reality, Mike. You're not a WWE fan. I'm you're, not standing up you're for You're not stand up for WWE. I'm not. So I'm sure that, yes, in in if you look at if you look at WWE – the way you look at every other promotion, then you're right. But you, you, this is the thing that, like, you know, I had the big argument. I've had the argument for Wait, months. You're going to try to tie WWE together with a wrestling Hold on. promotion? I've, I've had this argument with people for like a month now about Cody and the usage of Cody, and I'm still hearing it how badly they're using Cody. Cody's lost. He he couldn't beat Theory, and you know he what? won. Whoa, he, whoa, whoa, whoa! Hold, hold, hold on, hold on. Who's saying this, bro? If you go to the thread for any of our shows over and over and over again, Cody is not being used well. They've screwed up Cody, blah, blah, blah. And listen, this is a prime example of if you want to put on your New Japan glasses and watch WWE, if you want to put your AEW glasses on and watch WWE, if you want to put your Mid-South glasses on and watch WWE, yeah, they haven't done a good job with Cody or anybody, but... If you put your WWE glasses on, if you'll go, oh, why do we have to, uh, you know, grade WWE on a curve? Yeah, of course we do. Of course we have to grade WWE on a curve. And the fact of the matter is, the way that WWE books, they are doing a better job with Cody than anyone in the entire company outside of Roman Reigns. Anybody. So, yes, you have to grade on a curve. And, yes, if you look at it in a traditional manner, these belts are meaningless. These belts are useless. However, stand up for WWE. You deserve it. You still got it. Hey, everyone, stand up and sing my song. I'm a heel. They do it, okay? This audience, this audience, these belts mean something. Why? I don't know. But the performers, they're hardworking. They deserve their belts to fans. They get into this stuff. I don't know why, but they do. So the fact that we don't have a world champion that is going to be working house shows, going to live events, it's ridiculous. You must have a champion, but they don't. You worked real hard 
to get around to, to get to that, and you brought Cody into it, and that was it's that all was true. Impressive. For, you have to grade WWE impressive. on a curve. You I, have to look at no. WWE the way their well, fans well, look you, at WWE, not how just, their non fans look at it. I I don't know even what you were arguing there. Like that, these belts mean something to their fans. They're not Brian, meaningless, Brian. But their fans also, if you said, here's this big story with these two people, guess what? Roman's not going to be here, but Brock's going to be back for X show at this place, and he's going to be facing this person with no title on the line. Would they care? They wouldn't care. They don't care. They wouldn't care if Brock Lesnar showed up at a house show? What? And the fact that there's no title, they wouldn't care. Well, sure, Roman if you Reigns had Brock. Being on TV and not having a championship, you're acting as if fans care about the US or IC titles. They care about these titles. No, they don't. Because the company that, 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 that they love so much that they stand up for, they're just props in the game. So they just had a pay-per-view where they initially teased we're going to, whoever wins, they're going to get all the belts. And then that quietly get a, got, went away. And there were no titles on the line. And did anybody care? No. Their fans didn't care at all. So I, the fact that they're not going to have a belt, who cares? It doesn't matter. This isn't AEW. Now, if AEW went on tour and there were no Hangman Page title defenses, that would mean something. Like WWE doing it, it doesn't mean a damn thing at all. Well, so you know I what? don't get that now. And hold on. No, because you brought this guy up. I don't know, and I guess I'm not paying attention in the same circles, that Cody Rhodes, Cody Rhodes has been a failure or has been used incorrectly or doesn't hit in the same way that, what? I don't know. I haven't Pay seen attention, that. Brother. I haven't paid attention. I haven't paid attention. I guess to the stupidest people and the dumbest, most ignorant takes. You've got to be kidding me. No, You've pay attention, got to dude. Be kidding this me. is not. This Austin is not an obscure Theory, take. He couldn't beat Austin Theory, so yes. they're using Cody Rhodes incorrectly. Yes. Yes. Where have you been, dude? Where have you been? Obviously, with rational, sane, smart people. Well, listen, when we when we start running house shows this summer and there's no championships, no no Roman Reigns championship match or anything like that on the house shows or Brock, and we will track the attendance and we will see how it does with nothing. I realize that they sell tickets on the brand, but like these titles actually do mean something to this audience. Austin Theory may not mean much, but you know what? If they did Austin Theory versus Kofi Kingston and Kofi Kingston won that title, those fans would go crazy. They would chant, you deserve it. They would have a big celebration in the in the crowd. Yes, that would happen. I'm going. You know to... who the fans can't wait for? Natalia and 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 Shayna as the new tag team champions uh, on yeah, Friday. I can't Book either. it. Back in a moment with this uh, Dynamite Report Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Semper VV also of WrestlingObserver.com. Maybe that guy just got banned from the chat is going to send me an angry text <laughs> message like that other guy. <laughs> oh, boy. He actually was banned for what he was accusing. Anyway, hey, we got the uh, AEW show. Adam Cole, Dax Harwood. Very, very good match, 15 minutes. And uh, Martha Hart's family was there, so they did like a whole bunch of uh, Brett Owen spots and the sharpshooter and... And uh, Dax got sent ribs first into the post, sold his ribs the entire match. Finally, he goes for the sharpshooter, but his ribs give out. And uh, ultimately, Adam Cole puts him in the sharpshooter. Ribs are so bad, he's forced to submit. This was a great match. So Adam Cole moves on to the semifinals. We had CM Punk, whose gimmick is he hates Long Island. Every show in Long Island, he's a heel. And so he comes out, he's got an Islanders jersey on for some bloke that It's a left. relatable gimmick, by the way. And the it's... fans are furious at this guy, and he faces hometown guy John Silver, and he beats him with the buckshot lariat. And let me tell you something. Huge fan of punk, great worker. This is the best working punk there's ever been. This guy ain't coordinated. And, bro, <laughs> this was a live show, and this dude's got balls. Because he stood on that apron, and he stood there for a while. And he's in his mid-40s, and he was going to do a flip over the ropes, land on his feet, and do a buckshot. 
And bro, he stood and man, and he did it. And he hit the buckshot and he pinned this guy. And of course, Paige is on commentary. He's furious. Comes down to the ring and they have a stare down. And essentially, Punk has said, I'm going to beat you with the pay-per-view. And you're going to shake my hand one way or the other. And he wants a handshake and Paige just flips him off. We had uh, Tony Nese versus Danhausen. So uh, this match was like 30 seconds. Uh, they go down to the ring. Everyone's behind Danhausen. Uh, St- uh, Mark Sterling interferes. Danhausen gets kneed in the face and pinned immediately. Okay. And uh, I saw this and I was like, dude, this guy ain't ready. Because he shattered his leg in two in uh, at ho- around Halloween. So I guess that's why. Nope. He's actually all right. His leg's great. So this was just the story they wanted to tell. And I'm very happy that his leg is great because, you know, he snapped that thing in two. And Sid, a guy like Sid, never the same again. But uh, whatever they did, he's uh, he's good to go. So they're going to be doing a tag match at the pay-per-view. Hook comes out. He clears the ring of the heels. Dan Housen offers a handshake. And Hook shakes. And the place goes nuts. And Hookhausen is officially a team. We had the MGF Wardlow contract signing. To cut to the chase. It was great. MGF is uh, demanded that in order for Wardlow to get the, the match, A, he must take 10 lashings with a belt next week on Dynamite. And then he has to face Sean Spears in a steel cage match with MJF as the referee. Then they go to the pay-per-view. And if Wardlow loses... He can never sign a contract with AEW Wrestling. So uh, there's there's actually only two options. Either his contract is expiring, he's going to WWE, or uh, he's beating MJF. I'd bet on the uh, latter. We had uh, Ricky Starks versus Jungle Boy. Didn't have a ton of heat, but it was a good match. And uh, Ricky Starks tried to use the FTW title belt, so Swerve ran down to tell the referee... But he took the referee in doing so. And uh, Jungle Boy had a pin with a small package, but no ref. And the ref finally gets back in the ring. Starks hits Rochambeau and gets the win. And then uh, Christian, Luchasaurus, Starks, Hobbs, the whole crew, Keith Lee, they're all out there. So it looks like a three-way for the titles coming up at the pay-per-view. And uh, Jungle Boy is just demoralized. And uh, everyone's outside the ring except him. And then Christian gets in the ring. And Jungle Boy's back is turned, and Christian looks at him and then gives him a hug. Because they ain't nothing done quick on this program. Oh, look at you. It's happening, brother. Just wait. We had the Jericho Appreciation Society victory party. So the key is that Jericho makes a comment about Eddie Kingston's wife. Soon as he says it, Moxie's music hits. Moxie comes through the crowd. Jericho makes fun of him. There's only one of you. We'll we'll kick your ass. We've got five of us in here. Then Daniel Bryan's music hits. He comes out with Wheeler, Yuta, and Regal. It's still five on four. Jericho's like, come on in here. But, of course, Eddie Kingston with his face all burnt. Santana and Ortiz. They come in out of the crowd. The Jericho Appreciation Society now greatly outnumbered. But in this situation, the fans are just so happy to see these guys get theirs. Eddie goes right after Jericho. Jericho managed to escape. William Regal, pa-bam, gives him the power of the punch. No brass knucks, though. And uh, lays out Jericho is awesome. So it looks like, I don't know what it looks like. I presume a multi-person match at the pay-per-view and then blood and guts uh, would be my guess. We had the uh, Tony Storm, Jamie Hayter match. Also not a ton of heat for this match here, but it was a good match. And uh, uh, Storm ends up cradling her and turning that immediately into the Storm Zero and pinning her. And so it is uh, Tony Storm versus the winner of Britt Baker and the Joker coming up here soon. Friday. I'll have Fauntleroy do that in a while here. Dynamite next week, we have Jericho and William Regal having a face-to-face. Kyle O'Reilly versus Ray Phoenix in the Owen Hart Cup. Britt Baker versus the Joker in an Owen Hart Cup. Samoa Joe versus the Joker. They're calling it Wild Card Wednesday. Hangman Page versus Takeshita. Wardlow takes his 10 lashes from MJF. And Adam Cole faces the winner of tonight's main event, Darby Allin. 
versus Jeff Hardy. We did a segment with uh, Scorpio Sky. We'll talk. You know what? I don't even want to talk about this segment because uh, I don't want to talk about. There's there's a match coming up Friday, and you know how people are. So I'll have Fauntleroy do the spoilers. I'll talk about everything after Friday. And then we had Jeff Hardy versus Darby Allen. Darby Allen did this uh, this interview, and he said, uh, "Dude, I thought we were going to build up to this one." And he thought of all these video packages they could do, which would just be both guys doing totally crazy stuff: dirt bikes, explosions, falling off the bridge into the river. But he said Tony wanted it tonight, so damn it, we're going to do our best tonight. And uh, they did. And to be honest. Yes, in theory, it would be better to build this up over a long period of time, but, bro, I watch this Jeff Hardy and just, just get this done. I don't know how long this guy's going to last. He is hurting, and they killed themselves in this match. The worst spot may have been not even the thing off the ladder under the chairs, but the very first spot is uh, Darby running as fast as humanly possible and doing his cannonball tope. And... Uh, Listen, I've been wrestling for a long time. The worst is what you don't expect. Like, even though Darby came off that thing and Jeff went to... And they both crashed into the chairs, they both knew what was coming. It may have hurt more. I haven't asked anybody, but... The fact of the matter is, Jeff was expecting Darby to hit him with this big cannonball, okay? Which is what happened. But what was worse is Darby just... Flies. It was like a Civil War cannonball. He hit this dude so hard. And then worse, Jeff takes a bump on the cement. And as he lands, Darby then falls on him again. Which Jeff Hardy was not expecting that second one. And bro, that looked... And that was just the beginning. And then, man, they went from there. And as noted, you know, Darby came off third rung from the top of a very high ladder threw a bridge of chairs outside, and Jeff missed a senton and hit the side of the steel steps. They were just killing each other. And finally, uh, Jeff goes for the, uh, or Darby goes for the coffin drop, hits it, and uh, you know what was really clever? They actually did this cradle reversal in the opener, and it was a near fall. They did the exact same spot in the main event, and it was the finish. And Jeff Hardy pins Darby Allen. So Jeff Hardy moves on in the Owen Hart Cup. Darby Allen's devastated, but they did shake hands and hug afterwards. And, uh, man, if you're only doing this once, I mean, dude, these guys, you know, Jim Ross always talks about how these matches are career shorteners. And, uh, and this one may have been. is brutal. So there you go. That was AW Dynamite. I thought an excellent show. Excellent show. Top to bottom. It was Darby Allen getting revenge for this new generation that has had to lay underneath Jeff Hardy as he comes down like that sack of fertilizer from the top shelf at Home Depot right down upon you saying, just take this. <laughs> Darby Allen, the one thing about him is a lot of times with guys who do dives, you know, the setup takes forever, all that sort of thing. And, you know, even though they can be spectacular, they can be very contrived. The one thing that you can say about Darby Allen is he is very believable. And the force and the velocity at which he flies out there to use his body as an offensive maneuver, it's just one big offensive maneuver, is as good as anybody in wrestling. I mean, it's as believable as anybody who can do that sort of thing. It's, it's, he's absolutely awesome. I don't know how long he's going to last. He doesn't know how long he's going to last. Jeff Hardy, he ain't going to last too much longer. So as fast as they can get to the Young Bucks and the Hardys, I'm probably good with that. And however those two other dudes and then want to, you know, <laughs> go from there, that's on them. You did mention one thing about Wardlow. There is the outside possibility that... He could lose to MJF. He could go to Ring of Honor and almost in like a a big Bubba Rogers sort of way when he was in the Crockett and then ended up in the Mid-South UWF for a while to get seasoning, became their champion there. To get him some experience and then to have a way to bring him back that doesn't have anything to do with MJF. 
oh, wait, he can't sign with AEW, but we'll welcome him in because he's the ROH champion. Uh, it's a, you know, and a contract could change that way or, or something like that. It is a long shot, but it is a possibility that a, a, slim, a slim one, but there is a possibility they could go that way. I would just rather see him win. But if you're trying to protect MJF for a reason, you do at least have that option. Well, I guess we should get old uh, Fauntleroy here to uh, do this Rampage lineup. Is that the idea? I got to yes. find him. Let me let me where text him. I don't know where he's at. Where is this guy? <sighs> it's like this point in the show every week now. He should be like on schedule. Well, you know, he's a little idiot. Talk about something. <laughs> should talk about more little idiots. You. Uh, anyway. I got nothing. And obviously you didn't uh didn't plan this out very you're the, well to get worst, him on here. The worst where is he right now? I've ever seen. I got him. All I'm right. dying All here. Right. I just left. All no. right, Font, let's do this. Ready? Here we go. Owen Hart Cup Riho versus Ruby Soho. Jade Cargill and the baddies will speak. TNT Championship Scorpio Sky C versus Frankie Kazarian. C. Death Triangle versus The Butcher, The Blade, and Mark Quinn. Sean Spears versus Bear Boulder. Sean Spears versus Bear Boulder. Yep. That's the lineup for this coming Friday night. And uh, we'll have more later, but there is a change in the Owen Hart Women's Tournament as uh, Hikaru Shida is out. The story is she has been injured. More to come. Wrestling Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Semper Vivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Well, so, your battery's running out right there. You all right? Very quickly here, uh, NXT 2.0 on Tuesday, the all-women's show, the women's breakout tournament, the women's championship, uh, tag team championship match, the big uh, Hikaru, or uh, not Hikaru Shida. I'm still in the Hikaru Shida story. The big uh, Natalia match. Whole nine yards, uh, all women, every match, 0.10, 18 to 49, 533,000 viewers. It was the least watched show ever in NXT history on the USA Network. So obviously uh, NBA playoffs, NHL playoffs, uh, the NBA game on TNT, 3.8 million viewers, 1.3 in 18. So obviously... You know, the vast, vast majority of this is uh, that they had very, very strong competition. But uh, I certainly would not classify this as good news if you are a big fan of, of women's wrestling because we had a full women's-only show, and it uh, broke the record for the least-watched show of all time on the USA Network. Give me the demo that matters here. Give me the 65+. plus. That's what I need. Uh, I actually don't have it in front of me. Oh, well, the problem is NXT. Got to see if they held strong. They didn't hit. They didn't chart, so we don't have any of the other demos. Damn. So, uh, yeah, that would not be good. It also appears that we've just got the uh, AEW Dynamite ratings from Brandon Thurston, eight hundred forty thousand and a point three three. Oh no, they're gonna have to close the doors now. Yeah, we'll talk about oh, it tomorrow. No. Oh. That's it, everybody. Thanks for listening. We'll be back later on tonight. Brian and Vinny show NXT 2.0 and AEW Dynamite in great, great, great detail. Thanks for listening. WrestlingObserver.com for all your audio needs. Video.f4wonline.com. Twitch.tv slash f4wvideo. Talk to you next time. Wrestling Observer Live.